Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Photo Talk Plus, broadcasting live from the beautiful Oakland Hills in the East Bay and from Austin, Texas, with the Lotus Carol. Yeehaw. I'm Thomas Hawk, and we are. Uh, I've got another great show for you tonight. We are interviewing the one and only Sly Vegas. Sly, how are you? You guys are crazy. I'm doing good. Hi, everybody. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So we got the Sly is in the house. We're going to talk to him about his own work and all kinds of crazy stuff tonight. Uh, maybe we'll even touch on our little uh, episode in Berkeley one afternoon. Where cool. We dealt with a lot of, uh, well, never mind. Um, <laughs> a great lineup of panelists tonight. And uh, Lotus, you want to introduce the crew? I sure do. And guys, when I introduce you, use a couple moments to tell everybody where they can find you on the web and plug anything you've got going on. I'm going to start with John Armstrong. Hey, John. Hey, what's up? Hey. I'm Good to have delayed. You. I'm John. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me on. Uh, you can find me at blurbomat.com or uh, plus John Armstrong, J O N Armstrong on Google. Sweet. Thanks for being on tonight. All right, live Thanks, from Utah, right, John? That's right, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City represents. Rocking it and <laughs> yeah, That's right. <laughs> awesome. Okay, up next we've got Richard Hay. <laughs> yes, howdy. It's uh, Richard Hay, right? Um, I work, uh, I'm, I'm basically an amateur photographer. I work at Google and... Uh, I'm active on Google Plus, and I've uh, been a f an avid follower of Sly Vegas's work. Well, awesome. You're cool, man. We're so happy to have you on tonight, Richard. I'm so glad I pronounced your last name properly. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the first stage of cow manure. You can't possibly muffin it. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we've got Robin Griggs Wood. Hi, Lotus. Hi, Thomas. Thank you so much for letting me be on your show tonight. I'm super thrilled because I really like Sly Vegas. Uh, <laughs> um, you can basically find me here at G+. I have a website, robingriggswood.com. I'm kind of old and sort of neglecting it since being here <laughs> on G+. Um, a big thing I'd love to plug is the Google Plus uh, mentorship program. Mm -hmm. um, I am running it now with Tamara Prusner and Ron Clifford. And uh, we're looking for photographers, and we're going to start some programs that make it easy for you guys if you don't have much time. We have all kinds of ideas, so we really uh, contact me. <laughs> we need some mentors, and get out there and help people. Pay it forward. So it's a G-plus-based mentorship program, or how does it Absolutely. work? Absolutely. It's the G-plus mentorship program for photographers. That's the name of the page, and I'd pop in a link here if I, my computer was good at multitasking, but it's not. <laughs> maybe Elizabeth Hahn. She's in the she's in the um, chat room right now. But maybe she popped a link in there for me. She okay, is. I'll, I'll just the name of it, even G Plus Mentorship Program for Photographers. And I'm starting my art mem mentorship program uh, right at the beginning of July. I've already started signups. Crazy thread. 130 some odd people already commenting on it. So wow, really? That's great. Yeah, it's 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 great. I mean, it's it's wonderful to be able to. Um, do this for people. <laughs> Man, That's G+ has everything. What's what that? Did you say? I interrupted you. <laughs> oh, it's all right. it, It's totally okay. It was not important. <laughs> well, thank you for being on tonight, Robin. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. I've always thought of Lotus as my mentor. <laughs> That's <laughs> really cute. <laughs> You're not alone, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have me on as a guest sometime. Yes. <laughs> okay, and we also have with us, as always, the awesome Keith Barrett. <laughs> Thank you, Lotus. This, uh, this is Keith Barrett, live from the Orlando chapter of the Sly Vegas Fan Club. Um, I, I broadcast from vidcastnetwork.com. I'm a computer programmer with the Walt Disney Company and an amateur photographer. Thank you. Wait, so, so you're heading up the Sly Vegas and the Charlie Blake Fan Clubs, both? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Orlando chapters, yes. Man. Doing work. It's wonderful. Yeah, that's a heavy job. Okay, right. who, who else we got, Lotus? Your mom. That's it. Oh. <laughs> oh. That what are you testing me? I was <laughs> testing you. I was testing you. Okay, so story number one tonight. 
the new MacBook Pro is out. Yeah, I knew that. What, you guys aren't going to introduce your special guest or what? You went first, dude. <laughs> you, went first. you are the Sly Vegas. But it's like, tell us where. But but we're gonna get to you. We have a whole interview with you. But but while we're at it, tell people where they can find you. Well, you can find my work at uh, stuckincustoms.com. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm I am at uh, slyvegasphotography.com. You find me on Google Plus pretty much all day long, and I'm a still avid user of Flickr. Uh, and I just started Facebook a couple years way too late, but I'm on Don't there. That, It'll really catch on. <laughs> <laughs> now that slides on, everything's going to turn around at Facebook. Oh, right? Yeah. It's going to crash. <laughs> One of these days. Hopefully that stock's doing well for you. <laughs> so, well, story number one, the MacBook Pro. Has anybody seen that? Yeah. yeah. Awesome for MacBook Pro and photographer people. Disappointment for people that wanted a Mac Pro upgrade. <laughs> Yeah. Look at that one right there, dude. Been Second looking time. at it from my old MacBook. That's what I hear. Yeah, Keith, Keith, you and Gordon Lang were kind of uh, bummed out about that, right? Yeah, I'm actually planning to buy a Mac Pro. I was holding off, and now the the news is that there will be some upgrades for Mac Pros, but they're going to happen in 20, late 2013. Meantime, the MacBook Pro is pretty awesome, but you have to realize it's limited to quad core and a couple of other things. It doesn't have the scale that the Mac Pros do for the kind of stuff I want to do. So. It's still an awesome uh, but expensive laptop, though. Yeah, but it's got Retina display, right? It's got Retina display. It's got two Thunderbolt ports on it. It's got Flash USB drive. three for the first time. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's an awesome laptop. And 15 inches, I think, is the, is I run a 15 inch laptop. I think it's a great size for laptops. So that's what I she said. Yeah. I heard reports, but I heard reports that it's the hardest to repair, though. Yeah, the screen is integral with the casing, so the screen exactly. cannot be repaired. You have to swap the whole unit. Well, I bought one. Oh, okay. Wow. You did. You don't <laughs> have it. I bought one. You know, I was I was that guy who, when the Apple Store was down and it said, we'll be back later today while the whole Tim Cook speech was going on, I was that guy, like, pressing refresh over and over and over and over again until that store would open up. You sure you only bought one? <laughs> yeah, I did. And and I not only did I buy one, I bought the highest. I bought the best possible configuration I could buy. I upgraded everything, the whole 786 flash memory, the 16 gigabytes of RAM, the whole nine yards. I just went all in. So you did the Retina. You got the Retina display. Yeah, yeah. I bought it all. And, you know, memory is really easy to upgrade on those things. You could have saved the bundle in that particular piece. Yeah, I, you know, I was just, <laughs> I was slightly intoxicated at the time. I had been listening to Tim Cook. No. Um, 9.30 in the morning. In the middle of the day when you made that <laughs> post that you had bought. <laughs> I, bought I bought one right away. You know, I, I, my deal is I upgrade my laptop every three years. And I'm kind of cheating because it hasn't quite been three years. This fall it will be three years. Oh, and, cancel the order. Yeah, and I love my 17-inch MacBook Pro. That was my only sort of initial hesitation, was going from 17-inch down to 15-inch. But I think that flash flash memory is going to speed up my Lightroom so much. Which is what do you what do you I mean, this this laptop was practically made for photographers. I mean, it's it's pretty much your portable desktop studio now, I think. Doesn't yeah. it feel that way, Keith? That's what I thought when I saw all the specs and everything. Now, Keith, are you mostly doing video editing? Is that why you don't you want some? Yeah, editing? well, I do multi stuff. I want to be able to run virtual machines on it, so I can do some window sessions on top of the of the video, oh, yeah. uh, of the uh, Mac OS. So you know, you need a beefier system for that. I do a lot of video encoding. I'd like to cut my current six to ten hour video encodings down to half hour or an hour. Yeah. Um, so you know, and so I was really leaning toward the Mac Pro because I was originally actually leaning toward getting an eight core and. The, the other thing that Apple did during that announcement was they eliminated the eight core, so you uh -huh. have to get you have to get the quad core or the twelve core, or probably what I'll do is I'll go to the refurbished market and I'll buy the previous Gen eight core one. But um, yeah, it's it's it it was tough because uh, they didn't quite the rumors didn't fit what I was hoping for some of the stuff. But uh, but that MacBook is awesome. It, uh, if I wasn't already getting one from work, I would be drooling over that thing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I just figured who doesn't have it. For me, I you know I'm I'm off I'm on the road all the time. You know I'm trying to shoot the hundred largest American cities, and I 
running around, traveling, and so I kind of have to have the laptop with me, and I don't want to work on two systems. I don't want to have like, okay, well, this is my on-the-road system, and this is my home system. I want to do everything together. Um, but I don't know. I think it sounds great. It's got an SD card slot in it, which that's kind of interesting for photographers. Uh, my new 5D Mark III has SD and a... Uh, and a compact CF card, so... It's also thin. It's very thin. Yeah, I was interrupting. I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I just had a question. So you, you have, you've been using a laptop without a uh, flash hard drive or an SSD? Yes. Drive. Yes. Your life is about to change. I mean... Isn't it? Oh, yeah. It is the boot time on those things. I, I, I jumped in on the MacBook Air, the second generation one, with an SSD, and I was able to use that, you know, for a long time, but um, I had to upgrade to a Pro, MacBook Pro, and that thing is solid. I've done I've done some great Lightroom work with it. Um, you it's know, fast. 5D Mark II, full. Yeah, great. It's great. That SSD will change your life. Well, and that was my dilemma, because I tell, told myself I get a new MacBook Pro every three years, and it was like, I was, like, a, a year ago, I think, I, I think it was Trey who was, like, gloating about SSD. And I'm like, well, I should upgrade this MacBook Pro to SSD. But then I'm thinking, well, geez, you know, the new ones are going to come out, and I'll just wait then, and do I really want to spend all this money? It seemed expensive to upgrade it to SSD. And uh, so, I mean, I'm really excited, because that, that's what I do think is going to be one of the biggest performance enhancements is going to SSD. No question. And I would say that if anybody who wanted a Mac Pro didn't, you know, wasn't happy about the news, which is, that's me, I was not happy about that, uh, I put an SSD in my Mac Pro, and that has made a huge difference. That that was sort of my little personal Mac Pro upgrade. It's nice. Yeah, and you can get USB 3 cards for the Mac Pro, so it doesn't it doesn't get lost there either. It's the Thunderbolt that it gets left behind on. Thunderbolt, right. You know, yeah. Yep. So yeah, I do have to replace. I, I do think I have to replace my cinema display though, because it's not a Thunderbolt one. It's got the old. It's the uh, yeah. old one. Well, the Thunderbolt interface is backwards compatible to the displ to the uh, mini display connectors too. So you should be able to plug that in. Oh, is that right, Keith? Uh, yeah. Which which so cinema? I can, I, can, I can plug my Thunderbolt cable right in. Right, I can plug my mini display cable right into a Thunderbolt port. Uh, I believe either that or the Thunderbolt cable will plug into the monitor. Well, it's the monitor you probably, you probably need the Thunderbolt cable would be my guess, although I don't have any hands-on experience because there's there's circuitry in the cable. Well, but is the th is the Thunderbolt and the Mini DV whatever thing is are they the same size? Do so they plug right into the same thing? Yeah, it's a backwards compatible connector. Oh, is that right? But the but the cable may not be backwards compatible. Ah. So the cable, the cable came with the monitor. It's like built in. It's stuck. It's like a white cable that comes out of it. Oh, yeah. No, I honestly no. don't know if you could use that cable or you have to use a Thunderbolt cable, but you're supposed to be able to plug it, uh, anything that's already using a mini display port into it. This, this sounds like a Richard Hake question. Oh, wow. Uh, except I'm not really familiar uh, in terms of the, uh, the older monitor, uh, what, uh, what, what connector it's going to have. Um, so, I mean, I haven't seen your monitor, but... Uh, so, but I mean, essentially, my guess is that Thunderbolt has all kinds of different attachments. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, they got rid of the Ethernet port, and they're going to service Ethernet uh, via like a Thunderbolt adapter. Right. So, my guess is that they'll have a Thunderbolt port that'll that'll feed into a female version of the cable that you have that's coming out of your monitor. That's what she said. <laughs> I mean, the technology yeah. itself supports it, so it's going to be mostly a cable conversion of some sort. Yeah, it sounds like it. I'm not look, looking forward to that. That's. It sounds like it's going to be one of those like four week things for me to figure out. It's always annoying. No, it'll be a fifty dollar thing. That's the thing. Yeah. Just, just go to the just go to the Apple Store and talk to the geniuses. That's yeah. true. I'll go out there. I'll camp out. I'll, bo I'll bother them. Man, well, hey Thomas. Yeah. Do you have the the cinema display that's got that's like the aluminum with the white sides? It's like it's about that thick. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I then it's got the three things that go down and yes. plug into the back of your machine. Right, right, exactly. That's so it's like a DVI cable then, probably. Exactly, that's what it is. Yeah, it's a DVI cable. Uh, I don't know about that. 
Well, I, I mean, I have connectors here that will convert mini display to DVI and things like that, so I, I still don't think Yeah, it's but that just, I, I feel like I'm going to lose out if I do all that, those converters, you know? Like, I'm paying all this money for this expensive, speedy laptop. Is the display going to slow me down? Do I just say, screw it and buy a Thunderbolt? I think you're going to have to tell us when you get your system. That's right. <laughs> I will. I found I, this. I see a future show topic. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Keith, you can, have, you can have him on your show. You guys can talk about that. Yeah, we're talking. Yeah, about yeah. That. You, can, you can be on the tech show and tell us about your experience next week. Too much tech, not enough photography. But uh, no, I think I, I, Keith, I think you're right. I think this is the sort of photographer dream machine, though, right? Yeah, I mean, it looks that way. I mean, they're, they're promoting it for video editing too, portable video editing, um, because you know it's got it's got quad cores in it. It's got the high, it's got the the not only the retina display but huge pixel density and stuff on it too. So, and the Thunderbolt interface. So yeah, I mean it 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 I mean Apple was saying we've built the ultimate laptop. I think they have. I think right now today that's the ultimate laptop. Yeah, Especially so given it's, it's expensive. It's really expensive. It's though. expensive, but it's also as thin as a MacBook Air too. I had a lot of people were like harping on me for paying four grand for a laptop. Yeah, that's what stopped me because uh, you're in the price range of a Mac Pro too, and you can do more with the Mac Pro than you can yeah. with that laptop. But it's not portable. Right. Well, speaking about buying like cables and like really cool memory cards and cameras and all kinds of stuff, Adorama. Woo! Woo! -hoo! We love those guys. Adorama. <laughs> you guys ever heard of them? Ordered a bunch of stuff from them. New, New York City. New York City. We are we are so excited. We are so 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 excited that um, this week we added uh, Adorama as a show sponsor. And uh, later on tonight, for those of you watching live, we are going to give away a five hundred dollar Adorama gift card. Must be present. Ooh. Dang, so, can I go off the show, Thomas? Right. <laughs> Sly, Sly's already asked that four times. You know, I've, got, I've got Charlie logged on on five different machines in the other room right now. So. Oh, there we go. <laughs> different aliases. Charlie Blake will win the night, tonight. No, um, yes, no, it's, uh, we're going to give away a $500 Adorama gift card a little later, but, uh, you know, we couldn't be happier. Adorama is a company that... Um, you know, I have used for years and have been so happy with in terms of, you know, they're all, they give you a great, great price on just about everything you buy. The service is terrific. Um, you know, I've got a little story way back when, um, when the Phantom 5D Mark II came out. I was just, you know, bitching on and on because I had not been able to get a Canon 5D Mark II for the life of me. And it took me, you know, two months after it was released to get one. And it was finally Helen Oster at Adorama that said, look, we'll help you out and got me one. And they've, uh, Adorama has been incredibly helpful and the service there is phenomenal. Helen has been, you know, I've, she comments on blogs all the time. She's all over the place. She's very active uh, in social media. And, of course, Joel, Joel Meisels, who is the, did, any of you guys know Joel? Joel is great. He's a terrific guy. He's you know sort of the face of Adorama, and uh, we've been working with Joel, so we're really excited. We get to hang out with Joel a little more, and uh, and uh, it's you know it's, when we pick sponsors, Lotus and I we talked originally, and we said we want people that we can really really feel good about, uh, people that um, you know that we can support, and and it say hey yeah we use those folks and they're great and. All that and and that's that's Adorama. Mhm. Mm yeah, that's where I, I got my camera. That's where you buy your camera, Lotus. Yep. When I got a big girl camera, yeah. that's where I went and got it from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and they do they do have uh, specials going on all the time. So we're gonna help announce a lot of the specials. They have uh, some street fair sizzling summer discounts. Uh, they've got going right now. Um, all kinds of all kinds of great deals: tripods, drobos, laptops, uh, you know, drives, CF cards, SD cards, whatever you need. Um, you know, they've got a 64 gigabyte Sandisk Extreme card right now for 79.95 for the Extreme, which is pretty good. We're going to talk about those cards later on tonight, but um, they've got lots of deals. So check out their deals. Uh, we love them. 
we're glad to have him as part of the family and uh, and have him as sponsor of the show. So, thank you to Adorama. Yay! Thanks, Adorama. Great sponsor. <laughs> Great sponsor. We do. You're we do. Like that, so. We love sponsors we can believe in. So, uh, we've got some photo walks coming up. Has anybody heard about any of these? A couple. There's a Death Valley one, I think, coming up, yeah, but not coming up, sorry. What, what, what about a Bay Area, a one-year G-plus anniversary? Oh, yeah, that one's right away. Oh, there's a lot of those coming up. A lot of yeah. one-year anniversaries coming up. Got one in the Orlando area. Uh, yep, we're I doing do. one in Austin. I'm doing one in Denver. That's so random. <laughs> that I love that, though. I love that I'm going to be able to celebrate the one-year Google-plus anniversary in Denver, Colorado. Are you going to be kicking it with Colby Brown? Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, we'll get the Colby out. You know, <laughs> we'll do it. We'll get down with the Colby. Ask him about Peru. Yes, hopefully, he'll be back. Will Will he be back by then? By the thirtieth, I guess so. He probably will, huh? Well, there there are a couple of photo walks. There's a uh, there's one this Sunday, which is uh, in San Francisco. Uh, I saw with uh, I guess uh, Dave Powell and. Uh, some folks are putting that on. Uh, Ivan Makarov, or Ivan Makarov, should I say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love yeah. it. I love that you butcher his name every single time. I know. Yeah. I know. And, of course, the, the Mo, the big Mo, the big Vincent Mo. Mo! That we all love. The Mo! <laughs> They're doing a shot. I guess, um, I guess... I guess they did a shot in, they did a Tokyo one, and so they're going to reciprocate here in San Francisco. So, uh oh, we've got an echo. Did we lose it? Yep. Everything did we lose. Go crazy for a second there. Whoa, whoa. It was like a tornado growing out of the top of your head, Sly. It was like, whoa, what's right? happening? Do I see the Charlie Blake behind you? <laughs> yeah. Charlie Blake. Is that right? There she is. This lady. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, 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 Sly, scoot over and give her the chair. Come on okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Say hi. <laughs> back there. Well, I'll say hi anyway. Hi, guys. Hey, Charlie. Hi, how are you? Hi. All right. Good to see you. Hi, good. good. We're going to be talking about you later on tonight. Uh oh. That's for sure. Oh, well, no. My ears right. will be ringing, I'm sure. Yes, yes. I wouldn't have a camera if it wasn't for her, so. Yeah. Aww. She's definitely going to come up. Good. All right, you kids have fun. Okay, well, photo, <laughs> Thanks, photo Mom. walks. Thanks, we Mom. Will. We will. So photo, photo walks, there's, uh, there's one this Sunday in San Francisco. I, unfortunately, won't be able to make it, or this Saturday, I'm sorry. Is it Saturday or Sunday? You better get that right. Uh, Sunday, June 17th. Um, they're going to have a, a photo walk in San Francisco. I'm going to miss that because I'm going to be down in Los Angeles. Uh, hopefully on Saturday, shooting uh, the Los Angeles River with Robin and Marcus Guerra. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see, huh? Um, but uh, there's additionally some other great photo walks. There is the uh, one-year G-plus anniversary photo walk. I guess there are like 66. Did you guys see that? It's like 66 different cities now there are photo walks in. Yeah, I saw that I one in New York track. City. And I was trying to keep track of them all, and I lost track. 66 photo walks, isn't that? I wonder if we could get 100 between now That's and then. That's what I think we should push for. <laughs> oh, somebody in the chat room says it's up to 74 now. Is, is there a centralized website or location you can be to see all these? There is, there is. Uh, can somebody, oh, look, Joe's there. Joe's running that whole thing. Joe Valley is running that whole website with all that, organizing all that Man, stuff. are we going to have to pay him? Yeah, no, yeah, you're are not. Are you talking about the links in the chat room? Because he's throwing down links. Oh, is he? Yeah, of course we have to pay him. He's working for us now, I think. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Joe Joe has been so helpful. He's put this page together, and uh, it's organizing and, and putting them all down together. So 74 now. I think we have to get 100, don't we? Doesn't it have to be 100 photo walks at least? That sounds like the right number. That sounds like a good number. So Let's go, go international. Oh, absolutely, international. Singap Singapore, Hong Kong. Yes, Let's get at least a, at least a hundred cities. We've got some time, so everybody watching, one, if there's already one in your city, go to the link in the chat room, check out Joe's page there, and uh, if there's already one in your city, sign up for it. Let's get people on the existing walks, and then let's sign up some more. If there's not one in your city, you sponsor it, you set it up. 
Uh, Brian Rose will send you stickers, so contact Brian Rose at Google. He'll send you a bunch of uh, G Plus stickers to hand out. And we're going to make this the biggest photo walk of all time. Yeah, you can get an actual G Plus photo walk kit now, can't you? Can you? Yeah, there's a little swag kit that you get. Yeah. for. I like that. Yeah. It'll send you like camera straps and stickers and stuff. Hey, all I know is the only swag I'm mostly interested in is my new skateboard coming from Kimberly Schumacher. Oh, yeah. Right? Lotus did, and I are going to get a Did you get one of those uh, Google Plus photo conference camera straps? I don't have one of those yet, which blows me away that I don't. I should. I will get you one. I'll all give right. you Charlie's. I will get one. I need one. <laughs> although, you know, although I have to say, I do have a very nice smug mug camera strap, Aww. which I love, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And it, is a, and it is a little nicer than the G Plus strap. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yes, Although I do, I would like a G. I wonder if you could have two camera straps on a camera. You could put <laughs> one on your <laughs> tripod. This is better. Right. Greater stabilization when you shoot. I use my Smug Mug strap for my tripod carrier. <laughs> oh, well, I've got is a, that I've got a Smug Mug one, Lotus? No. <laughs> Thomas is, Thomas is. It's a girly one. It's so pretty, though. Oh, I thought Thomas that was going to be the. <laughs> it's my camera Thomas strap. is going to be the Lady Gaga of. Of camera straps, I guess. <laughs> Mine says Google Plus on it, though. I guess I heard today Lady Gaga wants to make a hat out of cockroaches. That's crazy. Oh, gosh. Live cockroaches. Like you know what? He's an artiste. I know. Wait, can we go back and talk to talk about the photo box instead? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, cockroaches. Hello. So, so, yeah, so we're six, uh, 74 whatever photo box now. So 64. Uh, six, no, 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 no. Joe was saying in the he chat room. He just said there were 64. No, no, no. He said there were more. Did he? Somebody All right, how much more. do you want to bet? I'm scrolling back to look. All right, he I said there's 64. 64, right, 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 right. Okay, 64. Hey, how many times do I have to tell you that I'm always right? It's hard for me to believe you sometimes, Lotus. So, <laughs> so, we need, so we need, five, we need what, what did I say, 500 photo walks? No, I'm kidding. We need 100 <laughs> photo walks. 100. 100 photo walks. So... So we're going to start pushing these photo walks, uh, I am at least, in the next couple of weeks. We've only got a couple of weeks, so yeah. let's, get, let's get people out there and uh, celebrate the one-year anniversary. You bring the sparklers, Lotus. I'm on it. Glitter and everything. All right. It is right near July 4th, so you can get sparklers. Yes. Legally. Let's get those big, like, you know, bomb, like, fireworks that you have you to can, have. You can get that stuff down orders. in China, China. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, they don't. They don't care about whatever law it is. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> you, can you can get all of this. You can get all of them. You can get them. Let's what? outdo the 75th anniversary of the Golden Gate Bridge photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's recreate, recreate. So, anyways, a lot, lots of great photo walks coming up. So we're super excited about that. And we didn't really talk that much about. Robin brought it up, but uh, we didn't talk about the Death Valley oh, photo walk that. Uh, might be coming up. I guess. I guess. What is it? Luke is trying to. Luke Asbury is trying to put it together over New Year's Eve, maybe. But Ricardo well, Lodge is saying we should do it a different time. They were talking about doing it early. That because of the full moon, and yeah. then people were saying that wasn't convenient for travel. So sometime in November is when it seems like it's starting uh -huh. to. It's still in the works, so people are kicking it around. So it's not like totally set in stone yet. But looks like it's going to be a November trip. Photo walk to Death Valley. Although with Luke Asbury, uh, I could already come up with a great name of a title if we went during a full moon. It'd be Full Moon During a Full Moon. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no comment. He does like to get naked and take his clothes off, that man. <laughs> naked and take his clothes off. That's right. <laughs> the first time I ever saw Luke Asbury, he was butt naked. <laughs> In the desert? In the desert. But I hadn't even met him yet. Full moon on a full moon. No wonder, no wonder why he wants to go during that time, of all people. It's, it's Any, <laughs> right? Good ass lighting, the full moon. Anyways, we had such a great time uh, last year. Sly, you were there, of course. And uh, yeah. what was the highlight for you? Um. Wow. Getting highlight for me. It was it, the, the whole trip was a highlight. I kind of I see it all as one massive event. You know. Um, Obviously, the racetrack was probably the most epic. Uh, it was crazy. But it, it was all it was all one big giant awesome. Event. Well, I want to go back. I don't know about you guys. I want. Yeah, I want to go back too. What about Joshua Tree? 
I love Joshua Tree too, Richard. That's a great idea. I, I've been asking that several times. I, you know, I'd love to go to Joshua Tree. Let's do it. Go out there, take peyote, do the whole Carlo Castaneda experience. Well, okay, whoa, well, hold on there, Hubble. Little campfires going. Right. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Right. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Didn't who who was it that died out there? Graham Parsons died out there, didn't he? And Joshua Tree. How do you know that stuff? You guys ever heard of him? No. Graham such a, Parsons. Such a positive show. I love this show. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, he's, uh, Grant Parson was great. He was the, you know, he was the Flying Burrito Brothers. That was, uh, maybe I'm aging myself here. There you go, Thomas. Flying Burrito Brothers? Yeah, let's talk about Justin Bieber instead. Um, <laughs> Can we go back to Lady Gaga? <laughs> yes, and Lady Gaga and Justin. <laughs> Can we no, uh, yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to go to Joshua Tree. Do you think we should go to Joshua Tree instead of Death Valley, Richard? Do you want to go down there? Yeah, yeah. well, when, when would you, I mean, you're, you're talking about November, right? I mean, we could pretty much go anywhere, right? Or we could go sooner to Joshua Tree. Or sooner, right? Exactly. I'm I'm a gamer. Yeah. You know, the weather in Hawaii is pretty awesome during November. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's pretty awesome always. <laughs> hey, Tom Anderson has a house there, right here. Yeah, he does. Let's crash it. We're set. We're 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 in. We're golden. I heard he's, I heard he's throwing a, a big giant Google Plus bash there this year, right? Yes, in November, and we're all invited. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Be nice. Be nice. Okay, so. Uh, we should go to Death Valley, or should go to, uh, you know, Joshua Tree, or somewhere. We gotta, we gotta figure that out. So hop on Luke's post and twist his arm one way or the other. Uh, story number three: Will photos from the iPhone impact the photography business? Um, did you guys, did you guys I see that Google's post? I think already done that. Oh, you think so? Well, to some degree. I mean, it's, it's become more and more and more available to be able to take images. The limitations in photography have always been cost and technical skill, and um, you're still going to have that in digital, but I don't think the iPhone is going to really push that over the edge very much. It's its own, I think it's, own, it's, a, it's its own genre. The iPhone? iPhone photos? Yeah. Uh, I would, beautiful, I would, work, beautiful work done with it. I would expand that to like all smartphone photography, like like you know like some of the new, even the Windows phones. You know they have the Nokia phone with a really nice camera, and some of the Android phones really nice cameras. So we've heard of those guys, Android, right, Richard? Okay, sure. Yeah, they're right down the street. I, you know, we we like we we like them. We like them. I've got uh, I've got one of those. Yeah. Did you get your issue resolved? No, no, fo no photos though on it. The photos don't work, but. No, but I'm working actually with the Android community manager, so maybe someday. They've identified the identified the error, but it still doesn't work. It's got to be fixed one of these days. So, but uh, Jay's post, uh, James Collum apparently is a fine arts photographer up here in the Bay Area, and he does these wonderful photos. And I guess they're in a gallery uh, down in Santa Cruz. And uh, Jay was saying, you know, this is uh, these are really good. You know, these are great fine art photos. And, you know, I know I have a, a, a good friend um, who, Ventry, Lotus, you know Ventry, right? Yeah. yeah. Michael? Yeah, Michael Wilbur, who, uh, he was shooting with a DSLR and he just gave it all up and started shooting with an iPhone. Yeah. You know, and then we've got, like, Star Rush, she does all mobile. Yeah. It must be awfully liberating to go from a DSLR to an iPhone. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. I, I, I shoot, can get the same I quality. Shoot, yeah, I shoot a lot with my phone. I mean, a lot of my posts are, are shot from the phone. But, but you know, I always worry about, can you really blow it up? Can you print it that big? Yeah, that's well, what I was going to ask in the, the gallery that he has. I wonder what size of prints he has on display. Yeah. It's a, it's a shame that John dropped out because he does a lot of uh, mobile photography. Yeah, you can't shoot raw. John? We did lose John. How do we get him back? John, come back. John, come back. Is he watching? Yeah, so I wonder, I wonder too, about what the, you know, actually getting it to print. I mean, it looks nice on, the, on your computer, but... But, you know, you're talking about a technical limitation, and those yeah. will go away. I mean, yeah. those are, none of those are permanent. True. You think so, Keith? You think they'll be, you'll be able to shoot 
57 megapixels on an iPhone? Yeah, well, eventually memory or storage space will become irrelevant or it will become all cloud, so you won't have to worry about the size of the thing you're storing. And then the, the megapixels will go up and up, and the cameras will go faster. And so, uh, well, what yeah. about sensors, though? You still can't get a decent sensor like you can on some of your DSLRs. Well, that's fairly new technology, too, so imagine, you know, 10 years from now what those sensors are going to look like. They'll be the size of our pinky nails. I, I would feel like I'd be like naked without my DSLR, though. You know, it feels so weird. <laughs> you know, no viewfinder, no nothing. I'm picturing your your profile picture with this mm -hmm. iPhone. Yeah. yeah. Some, somebody needs to sell a DSLR case for the iPhone, so it's just right, the same exactly. bulk. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> Well, you know, speaking of the iPhone, I mean, we do we do love all uh, all mobile platforms, including the lovely Android, who I am a wonderful Android uh, fan. Um, when it works, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I do like Android a lot. Um, Camera Awesome. Have you guys heard of that? This, from this company called Smug Mug. Smug Mug. Smug Mug. I think I know a little company called Smug Mug. Smug right there. Mug. Huh? No, that was tricky. You like that? That was a trick, huh? Smug Mug. <laughs> we do, we do love, we do love the smug muggers. Lotus is, are you, are you doing camera awesome live right now, Lotus? I am. Look, hi. Look at that. All right, hey, Thank Lotus. You. Nice to I meet am. you. So, um, you know, we mentioned uh, Yvonne earlier in the show and doing that photo walk this weekend. Yvonne's working down there at Smugbug now. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, what a great company. They are great friends of ours. They've been sponsors of the show. They're great friends of the show. Um, you know, Smug Mug is a great place if you're a photographer and you want to sell your photos. I know I took pictures of that uh, fireworks show on the Golden Gate Bridge mm -hmm. along with Mr. Sla Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I sold some prints off of Smug Mug from that. You know, I threw the photo up on Smug Mug. I get to keep 85% of the money. 85% of the markup, which is very, very generous. Yeah, it's uh, pretty nice when you don't have to do any other work, huh? Right. You don't. Do, that's right. You don't do any of the work. You just put it out there. They, People come and they buy it, and you get uh, almost all the money, almost all the markup. So, um, you know, in a world where a lot of places, you know, galleries will give you half the money, and you've got to pay for all the printing uh, in a gallery, or, or, you know, deals like Getty Images will pay you 20%. And yeah. So 85% is a wonderful payout from Smug Mug. Uh, if you are a photographer, you are thinking about selling your prints, check them out, smugmug.com, sign up for a pro account, put your prints up there, uh, sell some prints. Uh, in addition to that, they do have the wonderful camera, Awesome, which is the best iPhone app. I don't know, I, you know, Lotus, you've been using it for a while. I'm an Android guy, but uh, I'm sure... I have a whole collection of photography apps on my phone, and that's the one that lives in the home station. That's my go-to down here. Nice. The bottom, so. Nice. Yeah, it's an awesome app. And Smug Mug's really supportive of the photography community, too. You know, they... Aren't they? Behind this, the charity uh, print sales for Lee Daniels. They, yeah, super cool. You know, we're the go-to for the Plus One collection book. So it's it's really cool. They're a really yeah. cool company overall. We yeah, love they Smug Mug. They also sponsored the G Plus Photo Conference, so they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They have been, uh, you know, it's a great, it's a family-run organization. Uh, the McCaskills are great. Uh, you know, Chris and Don, his son Don, they, they you know, the, everybody there is his family, and they've got. If you're ever in the Bay Area, you should definitely check out their uh, offices. By the way, they've got some wonderful, huge, giant, oversized photography down there. You know, I want to say, too, you know, aside from uh, obviously being able to sell prints on Smug Muds, it's, it's an awesome resource for photographers to store your own, obviously, your own uh, work and buy your own prints at cost. Yeah. And uh, I've also been using it a lot lately when I've been shooting weddings and doing some event photography, and that's where I've been using uh, uh, as my um, FTP, essentially, and just uh, uploading all my files for clients to look at and go over and, and my coworkers and stuff. So Yeah, well we well we, we do love them. Now there was an article, there was a site, uh, there's a little article called the Wire Cutter. This isn't so much of a Google Plus story, but I'm interested in everybody's opinion because I'm in the process of figuring this out myself. Uh, what do you guys what do you guys think is the best card for your camera? You're talking brand or 
brand? Well, I mean, is it CF? Is it SD? What's the difference between CF and SD? Is it brand? You know, do, you, do is there a brand that you guys particularly like? I've been, you know, I've I've bought the uh, Sandisk cards, uh, but there's different versions of the Sandisk cards. Um, the Extreme card, the Pro card, you know, all these ones. What do you guys think? What do you What do you guys like? I've been using Sandisk for like forever, and they've never failed me. Now, okay, I'm gonna like probably cry tomorrow, telling you all my disc has just failed, but. Um, I love them, and uh, yeah, every t every little upgrade I get, it's always fantastic. So, Sandix, do you use the CF or the SD? SD. I'm only shooting with a little camera, though. Don't laugh at me on Saturday. No, no, no. I would never. Laugh. <laughs> so, so I've I've been a big fan of Sandisk. I bought all Sandisk cards over the last probably four years. I had some other ones that failed on me, and so I kind of just. You know, I don't know. I just stuck with Sandisk, and um, and I and I buy the Extreme Pro cards, which are the expensive, really fast ones. You know, I don't know what it is, like ninety-five something or other. Uh, the fastest ones they make, and you know, my five uh, D Mark III. You know, I found I can just go like nonstop on that thing. I can just bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Um, For anyone who's not using a fast card, oh my gosh, the difference is really amazing. In terms of shutter speed. Yes. So <laughs> what's, the difference, what's the difference between SanDisk and uh, for, for the SD cards and the CF cards? It seems, is there a difference? Is it just all one and the same? Nobody seems yeah. to know. I mean, Nobody I just looked that up the other day, and I, did, I couldn't find any resource on the web that gave me any kind of definitive answer on that. You know, yeah. I'm trying to find something right now. Mike Spinak did a, a post several months ago um, comparing the differences between different brands and speeds of uh, CF cards, and I'm scrolling. I can't find it right now, and it was very. I, you know, I never, I never thought about um, the difference between CF, CF or SD until the Mark III came out, and I bought that because it has a slot for both now. So I think I, I think I need to buy an SD card. Um, you know, because it seems to make sense. You got two card slots. You have two cards in there. Sometimes you want to back up if you're shooting something that's really, really, really. If you're shooting a wedding or something like that, you probably want to make duplicate copies of everything in case a card fails. If it's just you know you're out shooting the bridge or something, it doesn't matter if it fails. Uh, Is one or the other more efficient for video as opposed to stills? That's what question I, I have. I I don't take video, so I have no idea. That's a good Anybody point. out in the chat room who knows? I don't know. Well, Todd, Todd Sipes is in there. I see him. Who he, He's a, a pretty knowledgeable photographer. He says class 10, and I agree with that. I, that's what I read as well. Class 10 is the, I guess, the fastest, uh, what not. But it seems like the prices come down on these cards quite a bit as well, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I've got, I've got right now, I've got a 64 gigabyte, a 32 gigabyte, a 16 gigabyte and an 8 gigabyte, they're all CF cards. And I think I want to buy one of these 64 gigabyte uh, SD cards. I just put the link in the chat, I found it. That's Mike Spinak's uh, write up on the quality of different CF cards. It's not a comparison between CF and SD, though. Well, hmm. fail. It does fail. have some, <laughs> well, it has some very interesting. Um, well, if, it, hey, if you need a CF card or an SD card, I know a good place where you can buy one. I'm going right? to put that link in the chat room. You might even have some I on sale. Right? Adorama would be a good place to buy one of those, wouldn't it, Lotus? I think so. I just popped it in there, Lotus. Especially with the deals they have. Yes, the Adorama deals. Well, anyways, uh, the cards are, um, we're still figuring all that out, um, but they seem to be getting cheaper research and maybe we'll get back to people with a more definitive. I can't figure it out. I don't know. If Sandy Sloan says that uh, that CF cards are more durable that she uh, has washed them and run over them and they still work. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> All right. Well, that's you Andy, know. Andy, what do you do? <laughs> it's always a plus. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you wash your cards, I suppose. You know, I do that all the time. No, I don't. Um, yeah, see, of course, certainly the, the structure seems more durable, doesn't it? 
I think that they've all, with CF cards, they've always kind of catered to pros. That was always my opinion on them. I've never... You know, I remember the very first uh, digital camera I got was a Sony Mavica, and you actually stuck those floppy disks in the side of it. Remember nice. those things? Yep, I remember that. I remember that. Wow. So it's interesting. by 480. Yeah, exactly. You know, what's interesting is my, my Sony NEX7 doesn't take a CF card. It takes about four or five different SD cards. Hmm. Did you have the record player with the pterodactyls, too? That you put the deep not. down on there? I did no not. No humor? No? <laughs> I did not have that. But, but, uh, we do love um, another company, not that it has anything to do with CF cards at all, <laughs> Except that maybe you could take a picture on a CF card and then put it on your computer and then make a book out of it, right, Lotus? Wow, that was the worst yeah. way you've ever done. That was, that was, <laughs> that was, but I'm so was, proud of you for trying. And yes, you could do that. I try. Oh, John's back, so he John's can talk back, about CF done. and uh, SD. Uh, the iPhone, the iPhone uh, photography, John. Yeah. John, like, wow. John what happened? Did we lose you? I had to reboot everything. Oh you can goodness. take pictures on your iPhone and print it out at Blur! Yeah. <laughs> so, so John, John, John. Not affiliated, not affiliated, not affiliated. Right, before we get into that, because I actually, since they're our sponsor, we should talk about that. But uh, before we get into that, since we missed you on the iPhone, you take a lot of iPhone pictures, right? Yes, I do. What do you What do you think about iPhone? Is, is, can iPhone be fine art pictures? Can we make big no. pictures? Of, yeah, no, no? yeah, no question. No question. I, I think that... Um, I think that that's definitely a space to watch, uh, and I think Apple is really that. That's probably the strongest feature I think for me in their phone lineup is the the camera on the iPhone 4s is and it's amazing. I've, I've got I've done prints that are 16 by 20 from my phone. Wow! And they look good. Yeah, they look fantastic, especially if you suck them in and then uh, tiff them and keep them at tiff. So yeah. you're not JPEGing him repeatedly. I've uh, been very pleased. Interesting. Uh, actually, are, and oh, you got one to show us? I was gonna. Say, I got an eight by ten. Hold on, let me find something here. I was not prepared for that, but oh, here you go. So this is from and uh, nobody throw rocks. This is from Hipstamatic. This is just a a quickie little shot. Oh, you can't you can't see shit. From that. <laughs> it's, it's, it does look nice. I am impressed. It's so yeah. good, doesn't it? The detail is great. Yeah. That's awesome. Keep yeah. tapping so we can see it, John. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love the way he's holding her. It's almost obscene. Well, yeah. <laughs> that was good. It's so look, we'll get right in there. Look at that. See, get right close. I mean, we shouldn't show nudity on this show. Nice. But that's impressive. That's I'm impressed with that. So, that's not even that's using hipstamatic, which I don't even think goes full res. So, uh, I I think it's a I'm I'm having a blast with it. Like if you use the camera awesome and filter it up, I, I've had some great feedback from from my shots with that, and then just with any of the other apps too. So okay, and what about do you have an opinion on CF versus SD cards? Uh, I yeah, I wish I had a stronger opinion. I think that I'm the the 5D Mark III. I really want that for because it's got both. Right. Um, it seems like the the CF cards are really expensive still. Yeah. Um, why is that? Why are the SD cards so much cheaper? They must that's suck. That's what I was trying to bring up before. Is I think that the the CF cards are sort of catered to pro photographers, and so they want to get whatever money they can out of them. Mm. Yeah, SD cards are in everything. Just a thought. So it's a it's a economies of scale situation. It's a let's screw yeah. over the pro photographer situation. Well, yeah, yeah. Bigger, you have Something to in the chat right? room did say that the write speed was faster, but then someone else was disagreeing with that. But so I think that maybe SD is catching up, but maybe originally that was true. That makes sense. Well, it looks it looks like Joe Azure is in the chat room. He says it's more plastic, and we all know uh, plastic is expensive. You know, it costs a lot. That little extra plastic. That's at least worth a hundred bucks. Yeah. Right. That's gotta you know right. That's good for a hundred dollars there. Yeah. That's brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, anyways, I don't know. Who knows? We'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe I've been trying to figure it out all week, and Eminem will figure it out. So <laughs> speaking of uh, doing great things out, though, Blurb. We love Blurb books. Uh, makes great books. Now, now, uh, John, you, you have Blurb on Twitter, right? 
Yes, I do. Yes, you I are do. You blurb on Twitter. I, I've been blurb. I, I, my first blurb was on Flickr uh, in 2004. Yeah. Uh, and I just, it stuck. Like, I had, I had my website prior to that, and everyone was calling me blurb for my website. And so everywhere I could sign up, I signed up as blurb. And, yeah, and then Twitter took off. Wow. When I first heard about blurb books a long time ago, at first I did, I thought that you must have, started that company. I wish. <laughs> right. I wish. They're calling right. him. But that's how I knew you uh, online was, you know, you were blurred. So. Yeah. I, um, I've sent a couple of messages to them, but um, I think they're a great service, actually. I, um, I used them when they first came out to do a book for my wife. It was great. Like, so, I'm, I'm, they're not paying me for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But they're, they're a great you service. Sell, so. You should sell them that Twitter account for like $40,000. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thomas, can you that. can you yeah. arrange some calls there, or do you know some people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, that, but that is interesting because you are uh, blurb and they are blurb, and yes. we do love blurb. Uh, they've done. Uh, I've done a number of books through them. They did our plus one collection book, which look loaded. at you know, look at this beautiful photo in the plus one collection by somebody. Oh, right that's here. right. Oh. Oh, so look at that. I felt so lucky to be included in that book, really. Really honored with that's all the awesome wonderful. Photos. That's probably like the best photo Thank in that book. Thank you, Lotus. You're such a sweetheart. That's so awesome. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. That is it's so nice to see it in print because I remember when you first posted it online and I thought it was so great. And then uh, we had this book and I could see it actually printed and there's something special about that, you know. Print is a different thing, isn't it? There is just something, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a tactile thing, but not really, because it's just paper, but I don't know. It's, it's an it's eyeball thing, too. It's a visual thing, too. There's something special about it, and the quality is so good in these books. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Thank so, you. we do love Blurb, and we are glad that they're sponsoring the show. And, Sly, so have you done anything with Blurb yet? I have not. <laughs> not. Oh, I like that photograph. That's a beautiful photograph. It's Thomas Hawk. It's Thomas Hawk original in blurb. Oh, it's awesome. That's great. Wonderful. Guy. And who did the photo next to me? Who is that? Is that Kelly Seeger Kim? <laughs> no, L Lila Anna Tomi. Ah, Lila Anna. Anna. Wonderful. It's beautiful as well. Wonderful. So, Sly Vegas. Now comes the part of the show where we talk about everything Sly. Oh, all sorts of Sly stuff. You guys are crazy for having me on here. Oh, come on now. <laughs> so, uh, Sly, you, you, when, when did we meet each other? On Flickr originally, right? You know, yeah, we met each other on Flickr, and we actually met physically um, August 10th August of last year. He has it in his diary. No, I, I actually I looked at a picture, the exit date on a picture that was taken from a photo walk. We, uh, Thomas Hawk had a photo walk, and it was the first day that uh, we uh, had all met uh, Chris Chabot collectively as well. You know, right. that I think, I think that was the first Google Plus photo walk ever. Yeah, so I want to say I was, I, I, I've always referred to that as the official, unofficial first Google Plus photo walk because I wasn't sure if that was technical or not, but I do know that was the first time you had met with Chris and, and that you and I met and Charlie yeah. and made a lot of friends that day. We had a great time. And um, you, had. I remember when I met you uh, in person back in August, you had just taken up photography. You had injured yourself in that skateboarding accident. Yeah. And so you were looking for another outlet and you were sort of drawn to photography and you have had an appetite for photography that, uh, to me, is just—it's awesome. I, you know, I—it's I, I, rare that I see anybody just consume everything about photography the way you have over the course of the past year. Well, you have an incredible uh, amount to do with that. You're the first uh, first photographer that I looked at on on Flickr. When I started my Flickr account, um, Charlie was taking pictures a lot, you know, she likes to, she likes to use a camera, and uh, she's not real technical with it, but she's got great composition, she's a wonderful artist and stuff. Got a great and, eye. Uh, so she had a little, a little flicker, and I, I never, never looked on that page before, I, I had, had 
until that time had no real interest in photography. I obviously loved pictures and stuff, but I didn't know what an aperture was, and it just it wasn't my forte at all. So as she was showing me Flickr, uh, the, the first stuff I saw was uh, things of yours that were streaming. So I went straight to your site, and I, as from what I recall, your page was the first Flickr page that I saw. And some of the first work that I saw of yours that just blew me away, and, and, and this was the day that I decided I have to have a camera. I mean, you're half the reason why I have a camera, Thomas. Um, I saw some of the work that you were doing with the 14 millimeter. Um, all your wide angle stuff was blowing me away, and I saw a lot of stuff you were doing with Troy Holden. It was a, at a time when you and him were doing a lot of, uh, a lot of street shooting and doing some, some light painting and a lot of night stuff. And that was the, the major spark for me. Um, so then when I decided I was going to get a camera... Did you see Troy's back on Flickr, by the way? I did. He, he actually yeah. sent me a message the other day, and, and I was really pleased to hear from him. And I was excited to see his stuff because I wanted to – I'm glad I get to mention him tonight and have everyone maybe go check out his stuff. I have a list of people that have been influencing me and that uh, yeah, he's help. Her. Yeah, he, he's awesome, and he shares a lot of knowledge. And, again, he's amongst a, a handful of some of the educators out there like yourself, Trey Ratcliffe, RC Concepcion, some of the people that just offer – a wealth of knowledge to people like me that are just starting out and you know where else would we learn we're on this we have this amazing accelerated learning tool in front of us you know the internet this thing we're using right now and um, that's how I found uh, my handful of influences and then I immediately went on to uh, utilizing resources and you know between a, a handful of friends and influences and the internet I, I picked up photography pretty quick and um, I think it's really quick. Well, really? I, you know, like you said, I have that appetite for it. And uh, what was the first thing you wanted to shoot? I wanted to shoot everything as soon as I figured out that I have control of the camera. Because in 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 the past, before I knew anything again about aperture, shutter speed, I had no idea. When I saw things that were long exposures, I assumed this was all edited stuff when you see light trails and things streaking around and things blurring and moving. I had no idea that was stuff that was done with shutter speed. I mean, I'm, I'm literally a new photographer. I had no idea. Wait, how much time are we talking about here between your starting and now? Uh, this is my 15th month of photography. Shut up. You know what? This is like, this is so inspirational because I'm going to totally. I'm gonna pass all of my students on to you and go say, go look at slides. <laughs> Stop. It doesn't take time. Just <laughs> love well, it and do it. it yeah. it's, it's, it's what it's all about. It's passion and, and desire. I'm a musician at heart and um, over the past several years I've been developing a little bit of arthritis and I play guitar and, and bass and um, I started drumming a little bit more avidly because my fingers aren't as dexterous as they were and so I, I, I putting down, down the guitar a little bit I really needed a, a supplement for that that passion and, and that creativity and art and the camera was just a fluke it just fell in my lap at a time when all sorts of other stuff was happening I was just coming out of some you know, some really a uh, cascade of some tragic stuff in my life that I was really kind of powering through. And, you know, the camera kind of got behind me and opened a lot of doors for me. It helped me make new friends, get outside of kind of a, a little ugly dark space I was in. It was a bad time in my life. And uh, it just it shed light on everything in my life. So I, I, I paid homage and, and gave credit and respect to it. And, and so... I I, uh, I take photography very seriously. I, I try to learn everything as thoroughly as I can if there's something I'm interested in. Uh, again, you know, some of the earlier stuff I discovered I thought was all effects, you know, even just like water drops, you know, frozen water drops. I didn't know you could do that, you know, with, <laughs> with you know, a flash. I, you don't just assume that someone's got a bunch of flashes strategically placed all over the place and they're bouncing light off colorful things and making a water drop look like a rainbow, you know. And so, you know, I tried that, and, um... You and have a gift, a, dude. You have a gift. Really rewarding. Wow, thanks, yeah. dude. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, I hope to... So inspirational. I, well, I, it, that's an amazing it, it, story. It, it, really I don't have a vision, really, yet, to be honest with you guys. You know, I'm still just trying everything. I'm still, I'm still putting together my equipment and really, really um, deciding what it is that I want to shoot and how I want to shoot it and what I want to shoot it with. Um... 
I mean, but it seems like you have a narrative, like, you know, you have, like, something you're saying and that you're using photography as a vehicle to say it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, so, and what, when I first met you, you were shooting a lot of Charlie. Yeah, she was, was Charlie? My, she, was my, she was my practice muse. Uh, she was always there, and I had my camera, so, so why not, right? Uh, I did do a lot of, a lot of practice shooting with Charlie. I'll go into my Flickr and I'll show some of the first stuff I shot with her. I'm pu I'm pulling some up right now. So one of my first my actually the the literally the first week I got a camera. Let me do this. I haven't done the screen share thing yet, so bear with me, you guys. I'm gonna beat you to it and pull up these photos from the Palace of Fine Arts. Okay. Love those. I love. I love it. Love oh, the so one where she's kissing one of the statues. It looks like she's gonna bring it to life. It's yeah. Amazing. So the, the, obviously these are terrible pictures, and these look. This, this, this was the first. Um, that literally, one. The first couple days that I had a camera. These are the beautiful. first couple huh? days, and you come out with this. Yeah. That's Shut what, up, that's man. What I did. I. I she took me out. Um, and literally, the first day that I had the camera, I had to learn exposure. So it took me about three days or so to, to figure out how to use manual settings. I insisted that I shot manually. So I, I ate, drank, and slept photography for three days straight. And then I went out and did this shoot with her and shot all in manual mode. And these are, I was still using a Corel application. I've, I've only had Lightroom for six months now or so. Um, and I just got Photoshop uh, six weeks ago or something, and then I've been going nuts with the HDR stuff. So this was my first day out with Charlie. First day out with Charlie and camera. Yeah, these are my favorite ones from the shoot. This was we were walking around in San Jose, and we just went to a bunch of uh, industrial locations and stuff, and we we're just looking for interesting scenes. And we didn't now is it Charlie doing? I mean, is she the actress, or are you saying now you I want you to move here, move there? It's a it's totally collaborative. Um, Cause she's great. She's yeah. She's, well, she's an awesome model. She just knows how to pose. And then, you know, I saw things that were colorful and interesting, like this busted TV. I was like, ooh, I like this. And then, you know, we shot on it. And mm. yeah, I seem to remember you said you grew up in Campbell. Did you guys shoot there? Uh, no. So let me let me see here. No, we we shot in um, uh, over off Old Oakland Road in San Jose over in the industrial area out there. Um, am I still screen sharing? No. You're not screen sharing at all. Okay. Yeah. Can you guys see slide screen? Mm -mm. No. Okay. I can. Okay. I just you turned can? it on. No. Okay, I can't see it. Well, you, well, you do more than just shoot Charlie. Charlie is amazing. Okay. He's yeah, that's that. That was my starting point, you know. But um, but what I really wanted out of photography, you know, I wanted to emulate you, Thomas. <laughs> uh, you, you've like you've like gone beyond that at this point. You are doing. Oh no, there, there, there's no way. If anyone have, has ever gone out shooting with Thomas, this man can nail any shot he wants when he wants it. Even if there's no shot to be had, he'll make a badass picture. You rule. But. Um, you know, some of the wide-angle stuff you were doing and uh, the urban stuff you were doing, I was dying to get out and, and do that stuff. And it, it was such a pleasure to meet you and befriend you. I feel so fortunate that we're friends. And I, I, have, I, I can call you and say, hey, dude, let's go shooting. And you can take me to awesome places like Treasure Island and some of the places that you took. We've got some good times out shooting, haven't we? Yeah, we've done, some, we've done a lot of shooting, Thomas. You know, I, I was thinking about this as I was preparing to be on the show and of most of my shooting that I've done out outside of just a couple photo walks with a few other people, most photo walks I've been on have been with you, and outside of just doing my own solo renegade stuff, I've done most of my shooting with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I remember this one time where I don't think it was you and me. I think it was it wasn't Sly and Thomas, but it was uh, this guy Ty and Samus. I think mm. the two of them. They were out in Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> and they uh, they tried to get into this old ice skating rink that had been abandoned. Oh, I heard about those guys. You heard about those two guys? Yeah, <laughs> Ty and Thomas. Ty and Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of them one of them had a crowbar, and next thing you know, uh, they're inside, and all the alarms are going off, and uh, typical nice abandoned place. And uh, and I heard there were what? How many cops there? I think there, I think we counted about twelve before we decided we would. Uh, <laughs> 
part uh, Ty and Samus's company. Two <laughs> <laughs> troublemakers, you know. Yeah, those, those guys. guys. So then what, so, what did we do? That that was the day that we went straight over to Treasure Island, right, Thomas? No, we went to Alameda that day. Oh, we that's right. Alameda, oh, where yeah. we got Vivian, some wonderful... Vivian Gusaw says in the chat that you, you should get them on the show. They sound like oh, they those two. Ty and Samus, yeah, they, they might have some <laughs> stories to tell. Yeah, Especially I don't that know. Samus guy, he's been around. Those two guys, all they're ever doing, they're just drinking and smoking all the time. Yeah, those those guys. So let me let me go look at some of those shots. I'm back in my Flickr here, and then I'll share my screen in a second. Yeah, we um. So instead that day, we ended up in Alameda at this wonderful old warehouse, and uh, Charlie modeled for us and did some great stuff. I mean, it's uh, just some wonderful stuff. But but Sly, you know, we had a lot of fun shooting all that abandoned stuff. We shot some stuff on Treasure Island, which is wonderful as well. Okay. So here's yeah, here's here's where we ended up at in Alameda. You guys can see that. Yeah. Yes. And that you know, the graffiti in that place was great. I was just, I was overwhelmed this day. I honestly didn't get all the sh shots that I wanted to. I would love to go back there. Yeah. There's one. There's here we were actually uh, using some Coast flashlights. I had just got a whole stack of them, and I brought one of my most powerful lights out, and we were using that to light Charlie and cast a shadow on the wall. Yeah, talk talk about those Coast flashlights a little bit because I know you're a huge fan of Coast, and we. We did, you know, they could. We did some great things with them that day. I don't know you've done other stuff with them too. Yeah, I sure did. Let me go look at some other stuff that I've done with them, and then I'll get my lights out. Um, when we went and shot the uh, fireworks, Joe Azer took us down to these awesome bunkers, and this was done. I light painted this. This uh, initial exposure was done with the door closed, and I light painted the room. And then I opened the door and then shot my brackets for the HDR and then blended them all together. So that was so a little... You, so you, did you use a mask to do the doors open when it was closed? Yeah. yeah. And... Now, you, now, that's one thing about you, too. You've been doing more and more processing. Uh, yeah, I've been getting, getting into... More, and more HDR and... Yep. Uh, we got some music going on. This was all light painted. All this stuff was done with the flashlight. I love this stuff. This stuff is trippy. Very cool. Pretty wild. This this was uh, about a week after I got my fish eye too. I got the eight to fifteen millimeter. Oh, that wasn't that a great day when we yeah, shot. Yeah, this them? was an awesome day. This was that's wow. Michael Bonacore spinning fire. Yeah, Mike Bonacore. He lights steel wool on fire inside of a uh, a whisk. And right. this, this building that we were shooting has this spiral walkway. No, and we were. No, so I remember we were outside. It was it was Ty and Samus that were. Oh in right, Ty and Samus, those guys. Oh man, I, I always I, I mix us up with them. We all look alike. Ty, Ty is so good with that crowbar. Yeah, we we dress the same too. So <laughs> that guy. So yeah, the windows were busted out in this building, which and uh, Mike had this awesome idea to spin the wool down this walkway so that the uh, the ambers would would fly out of the the, the breaks in the windows. And I thought this was an incredible, cool effect. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that was a great time. Great. So, am I? Is it back to me now? No. No, you're still screen sharing. I'm on screen sharing. Let me get my flashlight and show what we were lighting some of that stuff with. Yeah, when you were shooting the uh, the bridge uh, at the 75th anniversary, were you guys in Marin or were you on uh, in like uh, the Presidio? Oh, we were on the headlands. Yeah, we were just we were right at the. At that was the, the best. You know, we had we had the best amazing. spot to shoot the bridge from. I think. It, it turned out from all the shots that we that I saw personally, I think we had the, the the best perspective considering what they did with the show and everything. We we got the the bulk of the the, the cool lights and stuff. Your stuff is great. I've only published one shot so far, but you know I'll publish the rest of mine ten years from now. Right? Yeah, that's what we'll do for sure. I'm still waiting for you to you you got to do that fish eye shot that we did in uh, or that. Uh, well, I don't know. Dude, I know it. Treasure Island. I think Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah I, that owe, shot. I so owe Charlie that shot like a million times because that was that 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 was really a great shot and it's just my problem with the you know what my problem is I can't process like one photo I have to process an entire day right I cannot just cherry pick a photo and process it and even although I did I guess on the Golden Gate Bridge I cherry picked one and processed it but it just it like gets it gets me all stressed out I want to process all of them or none. 
I couldn't imagine being in your position. I, I, I'm up to date on all my stuff. I don't. I haven't been shooting as much lately because I've been working with the camera a lot lately. Um, so I haven't been shooting for sport a whole lot. So I'm totally caught up on all of my stuff. And I couldn't imagine being in a position like you or, or like Jonathan Goody. Man, when I when we go shooting with him, that guy's changing his card every 30 minutes. Like, how did you just bill 16 gigs? <laughs> yeah. We we haven't even been, got, left the car yet, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, he likes to he likes to take picture of his hands in the car when he's driving. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, back on that real quick to to get past this. So this was the flashlight that I was using. This is the Coast HP21. Those things it's are great. Fifteen hundred lumen or uh, flashlight. It's amazing. This shouldn't blind you too much, you guys. But oh yeah, well, woo! How but, many of are those, are those LEDs? How many? Yeah, they're they're. <laughs> yeah, they're LEDs, and then um. What is that? Well, how much does that flashlight cost? It's like uh, almost three hundred. That was two hundred and eighty dollars for that flashlight. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's amazing. And I'm not the kind of guy that lives on this sort of budget. Let me tell you, everybody. Since I have started photography, I've been living on top ramen and late on bills and you name it. I've made every sacrifice you could possibly, possibly make. Apologizing to my dogs at night. I'm sorry. I'll feed you tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it just to, to support this habit, you know. So here's another uh, coast light that I light that I have. I've got three different size of the handheld lights that I use for light painting. And here's the more portable ones. And I want to show these off too because Coast generously sponsored my friend Jonathan Goody and I for the upcoming Burn Burning Man event. Wow. Um, which we are going to be uh, documenting from the building of the of Black Rock City to the teardown. So we got these, some special uh, invite passes and stuff to get there, get get in there early and do some uh, some time lapse of the the construction of the city. And they're going to be they sponsored us. They gave us a whole box full of lights. They gave us several of the two hundred eighty dollar lights. They literally gave us a thousand dollar box of lights. That we're going to be using as our as our uh, as our key and fill lights while we're out on the playa, and just for doing uh, key and fill lights while we're out on the playa, and just for doing uh, oh, key uh -oh. and fill lights while we're out on the playa. Oh, we got an echo. Uh -oh. oh, we got an echo. S slide. Do you have the broadcast on at the same time? No. No, you don't. Okay. Well, I think it went away. Oh, yeah, I figured I figured I'd wait till the echo ceased. Yeah, <laughs> I blame Chi Chu. So yeah, Coast Coast LEDs. They're gonna they sponsored us. They gave us a big box full of lights. We're gonna be uh, Jonathan Goody and I are gonna be out at the Burning Man for the about ten days, uh, filming the entire thing from from beginning to end. Real excited about that. And uh, what what made me want to get these lights in the first place was when we went out to uh, Death Valley. And Thomas and I did some light painting. And Lotus, too, we light painted old 64 Impala that was all busted down out there, huh, Lotus? Yeah, and Ryo, and Ryo Light. Yeah, right, with uh, Scott Jarvie. We had a lot of fun out there. Wasn't that yeah, a great that night? Awesome. Yeah, that was a fun night. But after that, I honestly, that night really set in my head. It's like, I want a good set of flashlights, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I came home, did my research. I found these things, and I saw that powerful flash. Oh, I have to have one. I've only used it five times. I have no need for that thing, but I'm glad I got it because now we have this cool sponsorship, and um, I'm going to get a chance to use that in a really unique ways out on the playa. So, Sly, you have also begun... I mean, you, you're such a you're, you're new to photography. I mean, really. I mean, it hasn't been that long you've been doing it. You've just blown, you've been blown away you know, any sort of hurdles in your way. You've just done better and better and better work. And now you're actually working as a paid photographer in many instances, and you're making this uh, your living. Yeah, I've, I've significantly supplemented my income, and this has just happened over the last three or four months. Um, I worked really hard. I, 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 I put myself out on Craigslist, and I shot a bunch of free events, and I, I, I really kind of, I think I earned my right a passage to go do a couple paid gigs. Um, so I shot some free gigs. They went really well. I got a lot of great response, and I was really happy with the results. So I put myself out there again, and I did a couple paid jobs that were, um, you know, very modest fees. Again, I wasn't trying to charge people some, you know, $1,000 for a wedding when I've only shot three weddings, and, you know, they can go get a real wedding photographer for that kind of money. But So I did some free uh, stuff, and I... I did a couple paid gigs recently, and 
Uh, they've gone really, really well. I did a, a wedding out on, out on on a cruise ship with uh, Michael Bonacore. That went really well. I did a, a Indian wedding, which was gorgeous. I don't have anything to demonstrate right now because I'm getting ready to put put together my my commercial portfolio, and I haven't gone through all of those jobs yet and, and sifted through the, the photos. So if I had one more week, have me on in about another month, I'll have all that together. <laughs> and also, um, I did. Uh, I started doing uh, Google has uh, the Google Trusted Photographers program. Yeah, yeah tell us about that. Um, I, I've actually I've, I've put that on the shelf because I've been getting so many side gigs. Um, that is a, a little bit time consuming and I'm not fully equipped yet. Um, it is an awesome, awesome program and I definitely recommend it to anyone that can has the equipment to start. They used to um, have loaner kits where they would actually loan you a fisheye lens and a pan head which is required because you have to do 360 degree panos. Yeah. Um, so I, I unfortunately didn't get, get one of the loaner kits, so I made some of those sacrifices and I struggled to strive and got rid of some of my old equipment, even got rid of a guitar and some of my old music stuff, and I got myself the 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye. And, uh, Which is an amazing lens. Oh, it? I love it, and, and I wanted it anyways because that's kind of, you know, the direction I want to go in. I want to do really unique, funky stuff, you know, I'm, look, I, I'm, I, I come from a, a tattoo and uh, graffiti background, that's about, you know, the, the, the most of my art background, but you know, those things have influenced a lot of, you know, I like things that are contrasty and colorful and unique, and I, I got into the tattoo scene uh, when new school tattooing was, was popular, uh, and that style of tattooing had a lot of bent, tweaked, twisted, distorted looking things, so the fisheye makes perfect sense for me to shoot with, and, and same with, uh, with HDR, my interest in HDR, uh, you know, the contrast, the, the depth, the, the intensity that you can get out of an HDR piece, you really can't get that out of a, you know. I was so, I was so impressed with that 8 to 15. I bought it myself, and uh, I went back and forth with this, you know, Sly, uh, in that thread with you and Gordon and I and a few other people, yeah. you know, saying, should I really, you know, it's a lot of money for that lens. It's an expensive. Oh, it's ridiculous. Lens. And it went up when I bought it. It went up $150 from the time that you bought it. Oh, is that right? It costs yeah, me. It's, huh? it's fifteen hundred dollars now, fourteen ninety nine for that lens. But it's worth it, isn't it? Don't you think? It is to me. I guess it depends on what you want, how bad you want it. it I, I love that lens. The the image quality is outstanding. The you know the the zoom range is amazing. You know, being able to to produce a, a circular image. You know, some of the, the the creativity possibilities are just endless with a lens like that. Edison, so what advice would you give? I mean, you you have advanced very quickly from somebody that was taking no pictures to someone that is taking really great pictures and, in fact, now is making money selling pictures. What advice would you give to new people into getting into photography, just getting into it? Uh, I guess the first thing I would recommend is just dig. Use the resources that are at your fingertips. The Internet is a, a most invaluable tool. Uh, YouTube is is my instructor. You know, you look at places like uh, Digital Rev. Uh, um, you know, look at Gordon Lang. I I look at people like um, Trey Ratcliffe. You know, you can get all sorts of free. You go to StuckInCustoms.com. You can get a free HDR tutorial right there on the spot. That's how I learned HDR. And um, uh, actually, I shot my first brackets with uh, with Cliff Base when we were out in um, Death Valley. Right. So and have you done a lot of tutorials and, and videos online, photography stuff? Uh, like actual paid ones or things like that? Like. No, I mean on your journey, and your learning journey, have you watched a lot of those or, or done oh. a lot of the tutorials and things like you're talking about Trey's tutorial? Yes, tons. Yeah, that's 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 been my most resourceful and all no name stuff. Mostly YouTubers. I mean, the, some of the most invaluable techniques that I've learned. And like again, I you know I just picked up Photoshop, a copy of Photoshop, about six seven weeks ago, and everything that I've learned so far, I've mostly learned off of just YouTube and. Um, Trey Ratcliffe, and then luckily, a, a week after I got the my first copy of CS5, um, Cliff Bass came to stay with me for a week, and we went shooting all week long in San Francisco and had a blast, and uh, we went and shot some some brackets, and he actually sat in with me, and let me let me screen share with you guys again. Um, 
he sat with me and produced, helped me produce my very first HDR image, and then from there I went nuts. Uh, let me find it. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm lagging. So, so that's interesting. So, I mean, Trey's tutorial helped you a lot. I mean, Trey's a good friend of mine, and I, you know, his work's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's that's where you first went for, you know, information on how to do the HDR. Well, how to do it right? Because I, I did. I saw some HDR. And I knew something wasn't right. I got uh, HDR Effects Pro, and I, I threw together a few images and made my first tone-mapped image. And I'm like, this looks really harsh. <laughs> and I knew something was wrong, so I looked around. I wanted to see what was going on. Uh-oh. You guys see me? I just got yep. this. OK. We see you. Did ask you were still there? Yeah. Yeah, it, really it, it, it was yeah, really good. Yeah, to make sure it's not videotaping somebody who's walked away. Right. It, 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 okay, so it doesn't ask me that anymore. So yeah, I went to um, I went to Trey's site after burning the hell out of a terrible HDR image, and and then I realized, oh, you need Photoshop, you need to do layers, you need to mask stuff, you've got to you've got to make the sky look soft. I was wondering why my skies were all grainy and horrible. I'm trying to find this image that I did with Clippy. Your first HDR, the first here, HDR. Here it is. So I, that was my first HDR. I did this six weeks that ago. Was, that was your first HDR? <laughs> yeah. I love how he says, it was horrible. It was awful. Was it? <laughs> well, that's great. So, it almost makes me want to vomit to see it, Sly. I'm just so kidding. Cl <laughs> great. Cliff, Cliff was sitting next to me, and he showed me how to use a... How to use masks properly. He showed me how to use a. He showed me this really cool sharpening technique, which saved the life of my 17 to 40 because I was going to get rid of that thing because I find it a little bit too soft. I got spoiled using Thomas's 14 millimeter uh, prime. So when I go to look at some of my wide angle lenses or uh, shots with my 17, I'm like, oh no, too soft. But <laughs> Cliff, Cliff taught me a really great sharpening. Uh, technique which saved the life of that lens. Ooh, what is that? Is it simple to explain or is it complicated? It is pretty simple to explain. Let me see. Give us the give us the secret. Uh, if, if we if we won't vi violate any trade secrets. Cliff's going to kill Sly in the night. No, he is. He's gonna be like, dude, that's my trick, yo. Yeah, I, I, I was in the. Uh, yeah, I was in the uh, St. Mary's uh, of the Ascension Church in downtown San Francisco the other day. I was dying for a wide angle lens. I mean. Right. So nice. So let, me, let me find a picture to sharpen up for you guys here. <laughs> Show us that special little secret sauce technique. Cliff's in the chat. He says, shh. Oh, Cliff's Cl saying, uh oh. Cool. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it. Uh, don't do it, Cliff. Uh -oh. uh -oh. don't, don't give up. Don't, Go don't. Ahead. He's joking. <laughs> Just busting your balls. Yeah, so. And then Cliff, of course, Cliff, Cliff was uh, has been a huge inspiration for me, too, outside of. Uh, Trey Ratcliffe, who also instructed Cliff. Uh, Cliff's an amazing photographer, and his HDR stuff blows me away. He showed me as we sat down in, at his hotel room when we were in Bodie, and uh, he showed me his portfolio on his iPad, and I was just blown away. I was like, oh, man, I've got to do this stuff. And then the next day we went shooting together, and I, I insisted on bracketing every shot. I didn't get any good HDRs out of that because, I, again, I didn't own Photoshop, and I had no idea what I was doing. But it was inspirational, and I did definitely start to learn that day. Oh, my God, I can't find a picture that I haven't messed with <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, uh, fail. Is it the high-pass method? Yes, it's the high-pass method. Yeah, that's an awesome trick. So, what is this high-pass method? We're going to show you right now, Thomas. Do you see this image, everybody? I yeah. see the Flickr image, yeah. Okay, so we're going to make this sharp. It's already sharp. I already sharpened it. But here, here's what I would do. Wait a minute. Are you, do you think you're screen sharing something other than Flickr? No, I'm, 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 I want to think I'm uh, screen sharing Photoshop, Photoshop but I'm, I'm not, not online. We've got yeah. Flickr up still. Okay, hang on. Let me let me let me do this. And you, and your screenshot screen share started again and share your desktop this time instead of the window. Okay. But make sure you don't have the porn on there right yeah. now. Right. No porn? Yeah. Make sure you don't have the nude photos of Charlie up. No, no, Cliff Cliff's in the porn too. <laughs> <laughs> He 
it's like, but that was my example. It's like a nude shot of Cliff. <laughs> right? I'm not sure Cliff gets nude. I think it's Luke Asbury that gets nude. Yeah, he does. Okay, there now we we're sharing my window? Yes. I'm sorry, guys. I've never done this before, so this is... No, no, you're, this is good. You're great. Total noob here. Noob experience. Deal with it, everyone. All right. This is a great <laughs> photo. Look at this. The layer. I'll, I'll, I'll duplicate this layer, and I'll go to the duplication. You go to filter, other. Thank you, Cliffy. This, like I said, this saved the life of a lens and a lot of my photos. High pass. And Thomas, you might really love this too. Um, mm. 2.5 is pretty good. Anything, you know, you start getting over that. It depends on the subject matter. I find you can crank that up a lot when you're working with people and stuff because the only thing this might bring out is like stubble on so a man's hair or hair and different things like that, like, you know, eyelashes and stuff. So this is real effective. Um, so I'll go okay. Then you go to your top layer, which is in normal mode. You put that on overlay, and it's a done deal. I don't know if you can see the results of that, everybody, but that's how you do it. <laughs> nice. Zoom in. Very Zoom in and uh, turn that layer on, off and on. There we go. So thank you for that tip, sir. Let me find something grainy. I guess this wall. Oops. So this wall without sharpening, with sharpening. Nice. Um, somewhat poor example. I, I, I wish I would have found something maybe that had a little bit more. Maybe this grate might look good. Let's try this. And again, you see the sharpening there without, with. Um, nice. Definitely has a lot more impact from my perspective, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very, very effective tool. And again, you know, just stuff. And if you look at this image while we're here, uh, I masked in the stars. Obviously, the sky does not look like this in San Jose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get those stars from, Death Valley? Uh, no, I actually, uh, I, I got them from, a, I have a, a, a pack of photos for, um, they're just uh, texture photos, and this one happened to be in there. Why this was a texture, I'm not sure, but uh, and, and you don't mind you don't mind manipulating your photos into unrealistic proportion? No, not at all. Yeah. No, it, I, I I I enjoy it. Uh, in fact, um, as I've been shooting stuff like this, I have a lot of pictures that look a lot like this that I've been doing lately that are kind of neat HDR scenes with dramatic light. And the next thing I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to experiment with Charlie. I just got my new Pocket Wizards. I've been waiting for them. I finally got the Pocket Wizard Plus 3s so I can trigger my flashes off camera um, correctly. I had a STE2, the uh, infrared trigger, which was really poor. It failed miserably when there was any type of ambient light, and it only worked in the dark, and you had to have line of sight. Um, so the kind of stuff I want to be doing now is kind of stuff like that, those, um, that urban stuff. Let me look at some more pictures for examples. What I really want to be doing is I want to take a scene that looks a lot like this. You guys can see that? Yeah. Good. And what, I, what I'm going to do, and this is all stuff I've been planning since I, I did these shoots. I'm like, well, you know, what's next? You know, what are you going to do next, Sly? Uh, I, I would go back to the scene and where there's this light at the door, I would take a, um, a, a shot of, like, let's say, Charlie, or do a, you know, a picture of a model right here, and then get that model out of my scene and then do my brackets, and then, uh, then come back in, uh, into Photoshop and then create the scene, do the HDR scene, and then burn the, you know, the person back into these big... Uh, Charlie would be great there. Now, what does Charlie think of your photography? Oh, she loves it. She's a little kind of almost disgusted with me in her own little way because... Uh, I've taken something that was really simple and pure and basic for her and turned it into this complicated, horrible, expensive mess. <laughs> uh, here's, here's one that I did with a fisheye just a week ago. That's really awesome, Sly. Yeah, this is, um, this is right around the right. corner from Thomas. I was trying to spy. You can almost see his house from here, so that's the real reason why I was here. This is the... Uh... <laughs> right. I was in Chicago, unfortunately. Right. 
So this is the uh, this is the Mountain View uh, Cemetery in Oakland. Wonderful place to shoot. Well, we do have to go shoot there soon. Yeah, it's amazing. I I I got there. The harsh the light was really harsh when I went there. It was a bright sunny day. Charlie and I just went there just to walk around. I got a few cool shots, but I really want to go back there at nighttime. So that's what's next for me. Oh, here's one I did with Trey Ratcliffe on the on Trey's walk for the uh, the Google uh, conference. And this is some other stuff I've been doing a lot lately is where I'm adding a long exposure in with the, my HDRs. So I did a, I did a one-minute exposure with a, a 10-stop neutral density filter to freeze this, freeze this water. Nice. And Love that. Then I yanked off my filter and did my brackets and brought it into Photoshop and made this. So that's stuff I'm, I've been doing a lot of lately, too, is... Um, let me find some other examples. <coughs> and here's just like a here's a surreal impressionist, I guess, uh, HDR. I just I wanted to see how far I could really flex the boundaries of this image without going too crazy. And I think it is kind of crazy, but there's something that still works about it, even though it's totally surreal. We like know that the Right, and honestly, what inspired this is a, a, a zone that I was running around in in World of Warcraft. <laughs> and, right. It's fantastic. So, and then uh, here's a yeah. swanky, swanky looking, you know, escalator. Four. We all know why we shoot escalators, right, Thomas? Because of Thomas. Thomas Hawk. I do love escalators. Has some awesome shots. Uh, some of the early shots I saw of Thomas uh, that he took with the 14. This was done at 17 millimeters, so Thomas's would look way cooler than this. Yeah, and I, I think you, I just shot one of my favorite escalators ever. I'm um, actually uh, I first shot it when Lotus and I went to Detroit, uh, in in the uh, United Walkway in Chicago at the O'Hare Airport. Oh, with like the squiggles on the roof. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, that was awesome. I thought you went all crazy in post until I looked at it long enough and I realized, wow, this has got to be the way it is here. Uh, I haven't even touched the. I haven't even touched those photos yet. I took one with my phone and put it on Google Plus. That's the only one that's up there yet. Yeah, Lotus, what did you shoot the the the, the Ford plant with? That that fisheye. <laughs> that was Thomas's fisheye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like sharing my lenses. I think I think I think my eight to fifteen fisheye has been on uh, probably about fifty different people's camera bodies. So. Yeah. Totally. So here's another example that I've been doing with HDR where I would do a... Nice. A, before or after I, I take my brackets, I'll do a long exposure too so I can get this star effect out of the lights, which you can't get unless you're at f22 or, you know, you know higher apertures. Um, and I like that effect. I don't like, you know, if, if I were to, were to ju have just shot this in the, you know, the regular brackets, these would have been all fuzzy little cotton balls. Yeah. Um, so that's what I, I've been adding to my my HDRs is doing a long exposure as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. Here's Chinatown. Did a nice little grimy kind of production. Wonderful. And here's a Thomas Hawk. I call this the Thomas Hawk crop. <laughs> I know Thomas Hawk did not invent the square crop, but the first time I saw a square picture uh, or many of them was on Thomas's stream, and I know he's a big fan of the square crop. You like it. And I, I would almost say you probably have an identical shot to this somewhere. <laughs> Very close. Here's the HDR. This is one I did with Cliff also. We were out when he was uh, here about six weeks ago. Beautiful. That's, Bern that's from Bernal Hill, right? Bernal Heights, yeah. Yeah. And again, this is I did the same thing here. I did a long exposure so I can get some of the star effects on all the, the lights, and then I did my brackets. Limited to three for now. I'm still shooting with the 5D Mark II. That. And then uh, there's this crazy sculpture. Valancourt Fountain. A Valancourt out on Embarcadero. This was also with Cliff. All these were shot with Cliff. This was uh, this was my first real day out shooting uh, bracket bracketed exposures and actually coming up with a a piece that I could keep or post. Uh, oh. Every single every single one of these were actually shot with uh, with Cliff. And when did you get those filters? You said you used filters um, earlier when you shot that fountain. I just got the, actually, and Adorama is the one who provided it. It was on back order for, I uh, had the Lee 10-stop neutral density filter, the... Uh, big stopper. Big stopper that was on back order for 
ever, and no one had that thing in stock. And I think Adorama was the first people to come through. Way to go, Adorama! Yeah, they you know they did got the same thing for me. I bought my big stopper from Adorama too. Yeah, they do a great job. I, I, I was excited that, that you guys took them on as a sponsor because that's someone you can really, honestly, sincerely stand by. They do they do provide for for the photography community. So you know those are my first pieces of HDR work. And again, that's uh, six oh, that's weeks nice. six weeks into it or so, and and I'm still learning Photoshop. I mean, this was just just learning how to do layers and. Uh, you are doing an amazing job, and. Um, one thing we do have to do tonight is we do have to give away a five hundred dollar Adorama gift card. Bam! Bam! What do you guys think about that idea? Huh? Your awesomeness. Yes, we do. We have to give one away, and um, so we have normally we have a, a trivia question that we give away, and oftentimes it has to do with photography. But I thought about that, and I thought. You know, that's kind of too easy in a way because that's just who can Google the fastest, right? <laughs> right? So I thought I would do a, I would do a question tonight about tonight's show. Ha uh -huh. ha. And, and to see who in the chat room would come up first with the correct answer about tonight's show. So tonight's question is going to be about tonight's show. So let's see how carefully people were taking paying attention. There still may be some Googling involved. And by the way, spelling counts tonight. Oh. It has, to, it has to be spelled correctly. But Sly Vegas took his first HDR shot ever at what famous fountain? What is the name of the fountain? <laughs> Where he took yeah. his first HDR shot ever for a $500 gift card from Adorama. It's a fountain. It's in San Francisco. His first HDR shot. Uh. No, we don't have an answer yet. Joe Azor. Yeah, you do. That's Did why. Did you get it? Did Joe Azor get it? Joe yeah. Azor. Yep. Uh, so spelling counts, Joe. Spelling counts. Uh. Ah. <laughs> Correct yeah. it, Joe. Correct it, Joe. Oh my God! I think I think Cameron won. Cameron, you can't win again. Didn't he win the five D mark too? He did. He won our our five D. He did. He won our 5D Mark II. Wait, he has to lose by default, right? No, I love you, Cameron. You deserve it. Did he spell it correctly? Let's see. Valancourt? I said yes, spelling of course counted. He did. did he? He probably did. He is good with Google. Oh, no, he didn't. Did he? Who, did he, who got it right? Did we? Is it him? Let's see. I, think I don't pretty. know how it's spelled, so you're going to have to look at the chat. No, I think he got it right. Let's see. So let's double check. Uh, where is his post here? Jeez, this thing, this chat room is like flying, isn't it? Yeah, it's it? jumping around for me really bad. <laughs> okay, so where is his, so he, uh... Oh. Yeah, it's crazy, it won't stop jumping around. Uh, it's driving me crazy, too. We need Keith to get his own chat room, huh? Yeah, Keith! Or use a chat room client. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, who, who spelled it right? Did we get it right? Someone well, can't log was... into the chat. Can you spell you, it in our chat, and I'll I'll look if you want me to. I, I don't yeah, spell. yeah. I mean, you'd, uh, I just I can't. I, it's like I can't have the chat without it popping back up to the no, top. No, in our chat, will you please spell yeah. it? I I can't even check because I don't know how it's properly spelled. Yeah, we can't check because we don't know how it's spelled ourselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, hold on. So in our chat. Uh, This is, this is how it's properly spelled, Valancourt, just like that. V-A-I-L-L-A-N-C-O-R-T. So who was the first person to get I think Cameron did get it right, huh? Did he get it right? See the first one? Cameron, you got to share that with Joe since he got the answer right. C-O-R-T? Wow, I don't see anybody doing C-O-R-T. No, he didn't have it. He had a U in there. Yeah, they all did. Hold on, hold on. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Hold on. A I L L E N. Wait, wait, wait. It should have a U. Well, hold on, hold on. No, Valencourt. Maybe you should ask a different question. Maybe I should. Well, one of our spelling doesn't count. Okay, no, it's it's V A I L L A N C O U R T. After Armand Valancourt, a hey, Quebec yeah, yeah. sculptor, painter, and performance artist. 
V A L L I V A I L L A N C O R U T. Well, Cameron spelled it right. He spelled it right. I think Cameron got it. I think he won. I think he got it first. He wins that's everything first, you guys ever give away. That's the first correct spelling. Joe Joe got it first, but Joe spelled it wrong, and spelling counts. Well, they have to share. <laughs> they should share, shouldn't they? they? Those two, those two deserve it. Yeah, they do. I can't believe you, Cameron. You got a. He won the five D Mark too. Also, he did. He did. <laughs> okay, so uh, our winner tonight is Cameron. How do you pronounce Cameron's last name? Segunza. Segunza. Cameron Segunza is our winner. Woohoo! Wonderful. Congratulations, right, Cameron. Cam. We have a five hundred dollar Adorama gift card. Congratulations. Wow. I want his old stuff. So uh, <laughs> contact uh, Lotus. Uh, Lotus will hook you up with the goods, right, Lotus? Yes. That's what I do. Yes. And I hope I hope Cameron takes Joe Azur out for a very nice dinner. <laughs> His last name is Siguenza. Siguenza. Is that right, Cameron? Did I get that right, Siguenza? Siguenza. Yeah. Spelled it out. Yeah. Cameron Siguenza. Another winner. And just in case nobody knows, here's Tibby. 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 All right, Billy. Billy brought Tibby. Let's hold. On. Let's hold on. Let me get the, uh, the official hangout mascot. There we go. Yep. The tipster. He, he has nearly 1,000 followers now. He's just on the no, verge of hitting the 1,000 mark. I'm going to be depressed yeah. when he passes me out. <laughs> well, you know, the reason why is the other, the other day I was just I was signing on on incognito mode in Google Plus, and I saw that Tibby was on the recommended users list. <laughs> the follow Tibby. That would be hilarious. No, hey, I'm Billy, I'm going to be on your show next week, okay? Yeah, you, you are. Yeah, I, I'll be free for that. I, I went ahead and cleared that day out. Awesome. And Erica, how are you? We've got you here with us, too. Yep, and I was on mute. Ah. I was on mute, but yeah. Hi, Erica. Hi, sorry about that. Hi, Erica. Oh, no Hi. Hello. So, so I had so Robin on uh, yeah. last week's show. That was fun. Billy has a great show. It's very yeah. tame. To get a word in edgewise. I'll have to play some guitar on your show, Billy. Oh, please. As long as it's not copyrighted music. No, I usually only play my own stuff. Okay. But I do have a musical guest for that episode, I believe. Who is it your musical guest on Friday night, Billy? On this Friday? Yeah. Uh, Nina Mars from uh, Venezuela. Cool. Nina Mars. She was actually just put on the suggested user list last week, which is kind of interesting. Wonderful. And then the week after that, you'll have Lady Gaga. And she's already um, been on the show. With her cockroach hat. I'll have Lizzie Spit the week after that. Wonderful. And week after that, I should. I'm. I, I think. I hopefully have. I think it's a group called Three Penny Walnut. Wait, you told me you had Green Day. <laughs> <laughs> no. And the week after that is actually. I, I. I actually have the show scheduled for a, a Saturday afternoon because I actually want to get some people from Europe onto the show because I've only ever had. Helen Soteriditis, or however you pronounce her last name, I, I never get it right, on the show who's from the Europe area. Everyone else is like, it's 4 a.m., no way. <laughs> I know, we had, you know, the only European we've been able to get on here is Lotus's sister, and that's because uh, Lotus you has... You had Mike Shaw. Had, had Helen's Mike been Shaw on. Helen has been on. Helen has been on. No, Helen is. And been so on. is Mike Shaw. Mike Shaw was on here. And Mike yeah, was Shaw. on. Mike Shaw and Helen and Lotus's sister. But Athena. of course, we re we like Athena very much. We, do. And we like to talk about her because she's awesome. <laughs> and she a, wants to steal too. She's cookie. She is. You know, she's coming. She's coming here to visit, no and we are going to spend the entire week just making a plan to kidnap Tibby, Billy. So, so William, we're gonna come get him. We're gonna come. Athena and I are gonna come to Canada, and take him. 
Nice. Because Kansas is such a small place. Uh, hi. I got Will William brought me the last cookie. Hey, William. Oh, that's so nice. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? William and I are going to hang out during summer, right, Will? Yeah. That's right. Him and I. It's just him and I all summer. Yeah, Perfect. not just you two. I'm going to crash your party a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> and a fisheye lens. Yeah. My dad's awesome. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love that. That is so cute. Yeah, that is so all cute. Right. All yeah. right, kids. You just doubled your allowance. Nice. <laughs> yeah, if you don't let me play your Xbox with you, I'm going to take that extra percentage of your allowance from you. Right. Well, guys, we are we are actually about 16 minutes over the broadcast. Uh, don't break it. Which was easy to do because uh, it was a great show. Tonight. We had Tibby. Uh, we do have Tibby. We and we have Sly. Sly Vegas. The Sly Vegas. You guys, thank you so much for having me on here. I was nervous all week. I'm like, what am I going to say? I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still practicing, everybody. I know, I just felt that way, because there's so many awesome artists out there and amazing photographers, you know, but I appreciate it. Thomas, you've given so many people a voice, you know. I, how much respect are you owed, man, you know? Well, man, hey, you know, it's more photographers. You work, you've been doing this for years, and you've been plugging away, and you've, you've built an incredible resource and and following and you wholeheartedly share that with people you've never even met before you know and uh, you've made all of our experiences especially on Google Plus I can speak for that sincerely I mean you've made so many people's experiences just so robust on there I don't I'm, I'm, I hope everybody really realizes what a um, what a role you play in the photography community. I'm sure they do, but if they don't, you better know now, everybody. <laughs> oh, thanks, Matt. Well, no, it's 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 a group effort, and Google Plus is a great platform, and, uh, you know, we, we've all enjoyed getting to meet each other and know each other, and, I mean, that's the thing about Google Plus that I love is, you know, all, you know everybody here, I mean, you know, we know each other so much better, and in many ways, uh, all of us, everybody in this room tonight, we know each other better through Google Plus. Isn't that right? Yeah. For sure. I mean, before Google Plus, we did not know each other. You know, I mean, we we kind of did. I mean, I knew Billy from Flickr and Sly from Flickr and Lotus from Flickr and all that, but we didn't really, you know, we weren't as close as we are now, and it's wonderful, you know. And I met John on a photo walk in Salt Lake City, and yeah. you know, uh, you know, in person, and you know, some of it's online, and you know, Robin, I've loved getting to know your stuff over the, you know, past few months, and all your yeah. stuff online, and hopefully we'll hang out in L.A. on Saturday, huh? Awesome. Love but I think, I think the thing with the Google Plus is that a lot of us end up hanging out in person, right? I mean, yeah. I've hung out with you, and Richard, I've hung out with you, and Sly, and uh, Billy, we haven't hung out yet, but man, it sure feels like we have. Right? Doesn't it feel like you've hung out with Billy, like, like Billy's... I feel like Billy is like in my room every once in a while, you know. <laughs> he probably is. He probably is. He probably, probably is. is. <laughs> but uh, anyways, it's Google Plus is a great platform. These hangouts are great. The meetups are great. The photo walks are great. And uh, you know, it's. I think it's, it's not about anything. It's just about the community, and it's about people that are in all over the place. You know, whether it's uh, you know. Vivian in New York, and I see Vivian in the chat room there. Other people, I mean, they're all, it's all the same story. We've all met each other and know each other and, and all that. So, Anyways, it's a good deal. And uh, Lotus, who do we got on next week? Our guest next week is Patrick DeFruscia. Right. Oh, Patrick's a wonderful photographer. So we will be looking at his wonderful photographs of the Golden Gate Bridge and other stuff. Cool. Tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. I think you mean next week. <laughs> I say tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Oh, what's in that cookie? <laughs> How many? <laughs> Someday this will be a daily show. How many glasses of wine have I had? Right. I love your big wine glasses, Thomas. I don't think it's a, a show without them. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, maybe we'll have a nice little wrap-up report of. Uh, of uh, Robin and uh, Mark and I climbing over fences to get into the uh, L.A. River. Rock on. Yeah. And, and some long exposure shots from Sly from Burning Man. Yeah. yeah. Well, we still have some time for those, but that's coming yeah, up. That'll be a couple months. 
a couple more months still, but that's on its way. All right, guys. Well, thank you, all of you. Thanks, it's everybody. been a great show. Great hanging thank out Thank you, tonight. Thomas and Lotus. Absolutely. An awesome, awesome slide. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. We will see you guys next week. See you guys. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. And I'll see you slide in next Friday.